We are so blessed, those of us in the divine world who've been given this gift. And uh, I, I'm so excited that he's going to share with us tonight and and uh, talk to us about um, th this era that we're in, this era of the divine will. So welcome, Father. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. But Debbie, God bless you. Nice to Can meet you. Can you start us off with a prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Amen. Queen of all saints, pray for us. Pray for us. Amen. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Father, we have a lot to talk about tonight, and um, uh, we we're going to talk about the three eras, uh, the eras of the divine will, and what's happening. Um, in our world now and and what this means in the divine will so i'm just going to leave aside and let you well let, 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 let me read the prayer uh for today the of saint Bar bartholomew the the first reading of the book of revelation the angel spoke to me saying come here i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he took me in spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city jerusalem coming down out of heaven and it gleamed with the splendor of god this, this is what Jesus uh, taught Louisa, uh, this new and divine way of holiness that Pope St. John Paul II uh, prophesied about at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia, that was Louisa's spiritual director. Uh, I was 30 feet away from the Holy Father when he said, we are now going to enter a new and divine way of holiness. And I said, is he reading the book of heaven? Is, is he doing this? And, and he read what St. Honorable de Francia, uh, Saint, he's the head of the Rogationists, uh, and, 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 and Pope St. John Paul II made him uh, the, uh, uh, the one to pray for for priesthood. For if you need a priest, if, you're, if your diocese is in need of priests, go to St. Honorable de Francia, who's John Paul II says, this is the one you go to for vocations and pray, and God will give you vocations, guaranteed. What we're going to start today is volume 12 that we're going to talk about the new era of the divine will. And this is, um, it's a new beginning that we have to understand. Everything's falling apart. It's not really falling apart. Everything is, uh, God's getting everything ready. Um, he's eliminating things. He's adding things. He's watching us. He, and this is, so he says, to prove that the kingdom is coming, the fulfillment of the Our Father, he says, I'm going to give, this is what he gave to Louisa. Louisa spent her, her entire life not eating, not drinking, not sleeping. Um, and she was hungry, she was tired, and she was thirsty. It wasn't easy for her. It was a real suffering. Jesus said, I, I, I nail you to your bed. So for 70 years, this is what, Saint, uh, this is what the Archbishop Piceri has said, for 70 years, she suffered. And in this suffering, um, Jesus taught her about the divine will. And he said, I've taught no saint this. He says, now I begin a new era. Uh, this new era is going to bring mankind to sanctification. So what we've learned from the saints is as how to do the will of God, how to be good, holy, and saintly. And now Jesus says, now that you have learned over the last 2,000 years how to get ready for uh, sanctification. He said the ABCs of the Catholic church. He says, now I'm going to show you how to be sanctified. And he says, I died on the cross. He says, I shed every drop of my blood basically to get the world ready for sanctification. So in volume 12, now there's 36 volumes uh, and the volumes aren't very big. The volumes are uh, basically like a notebook. So they, they're not, they're, they're just, they're, they're very small books and it's 36 volumes are about maybe about this wide. Uh, and, um, uh, they were in the secret archives of the Vatican. They were hidden there, uh, basically so that no one would ever see them again. And in 1978, 19, excuse me, 67, 
uh, I think it was 67, maybe it might've been 66. Um, uh, Pope uh, Paul VI got rid of the index and the index were condemned books. And he says, you can read anything you want now. And I was furious. I was in the seminary at the time and I, I was furious. <laughs> I said, who is this man getting these horrible books to humanity? You know, I mean, they're <laughs> condemned, you know? And little did I, you know, know that in, in the wisdom of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, it was, it was the Holy Spirit that said, open the door to the secret archives of the Vatican. Now, secret doesn't mean hidden. Secret was the private, the private writings of the Holy Father, the private uh, documents that were in the Holy Father's you know, possession. And um, my spiritual director worked in the secret archives, uh, and, and he came to my seminary. Uh, and a uh, great man, Father Francesco Travasi, great priest. And um, uh, he says, he, I would say to him after I knew about Luisa, you've got to get me the books of Luisa. <laughs> and he, he'd go, he goes, he goes, Tom Seltzer, I promise you, I will get you the books. And he'd go to the, go to the Vatican and he'd come back and I go, where's the books? He says, oh, I, I couldn't make it. I could, but I promise you the next time, you'd always say that. And uh, the next time he went, the last time he went, he died in, in, at the Vatican, he died in Rome. And, uh, and I said to him, you broke my promise. You broke your promise. I mean, I, I was really, what the heck is going on? And, um, and, and then the Archbishop was, the Archbishop of Trani, Archbishop Casadi, was my spiritual director's best friend. They were from the same community, missionaries of the Sacre Coeur. And uh, they were best friends. They were ordained together. I and mean, can you imagine how God is working? And uh, so we were praying and, and we were thanking God for the divine will. And, and one day he, I get a call from, you know, basically the secretary of the cause, uh, Louisa, because I was, I was really, I was really in love with Louisa. And that was in 19, uh, 1994, no, 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 1996, to go to the secret archives and get the writings out. So we got the writings out and um, Jesus says this, when the writings are given to the world, the face of the earth will change. So what happened after 1996 was Pope St. John Paul says, now we're gonna have the year of Jesus, 1997. Then we're gonna have the year of the Holy Spirit, 1998. Then we're gonna have the year of the, of the Father, 1999. And then we enter into the third millennium. And, and Pope, uh, not Pope, but... Uh, Padre Pio, who knew of Luisa, they were they lived very close to each other, uh, within you know, forty five minutes to an hour. Uh, Padre Pio said, "Luisa is a second son that will give light and life to everyone and everything." And he says, "Luisa, in the third millennium, in the next millennium," he said, "in the next millennium, Luisa Picaretta will give all of the church and humanity will will focus on Luisa Picaretta." So when you think of this focusing. You know, if you have a high powered rifle and you got a good scope, you're focusing, you got all of creation around you, but you're focusing on one thing uh, in hunting. And, and this, it, God is saying, we're going to focus on Luisa Picaretta. Why? She's going to help teach you, because these are the teachings of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, how to live in this, in this abundant life. So getting to, <laughs> here, we, here we are, we're going to get to volume 12, January 29th, 1919. And Jesus says, my beloved daughter, Louisa. See, it, it was, you have to understand, we want to be a, a true child of Jesus. We want to be a true child of Mary. And here we're seeing this relationship that Jesus had with Louisa. My, by my beloved daughter, Louisa, I, Jesus, want to let you know the order of my providence. So Louisa's writing everything down because her spiritual director said, she, she, you have to write everything down. And, I, and, and in volume two, when she was writing volume two, her spiritual director said, how did you get to this point? How, how, what did Jesus teach you? What did Jesus show you? What did you, and, and that's volume one. So really volume one is volume two. That's why volume one has no dates in it because she sat down and wrote. And, and when you read volume one, you see, how much God loved, loved this soul, this little soul, and how much he put her through. And, uh, and he does that with us. Each and every one of us has physical, spiritual, mental, emotional sufferings. And he shows us that sufferings are the stagecoach to heaven. And what we have to go through 
uh, shows, it teaches us who, who we are, what, what God wants us to become. So it's, it's really a new and divine way of holiness now because of Louisa, because this is the fullness of life, the life of Jesus, the fullness of life, the life of Mary. And, and it, what we've been following all these years is the lives of the saints. We love St. Teresa of Avila. We love St. Catherine of Siena. We love uh, St. Jo uh, Joan of Arc. She's, she's great. But Jesus says, now it's time for me to teach you how to live my life. And it's Jesus who's teaching. That's why I love the book of heaven. So she's, he says, I want you to let you know the order of my providence. In every 2,000 years, I, God, have renewed the face of the earth, renewed the world. So he says, in the first 2,000 years, I, God, renewed it with a deluge, with a flood. In the second 2,000 years, I, God, renewed it with my coming upon earth and shedding every drop of my blood. When I manifested my holy humanity, from which many as if many fissures of my divinity showed forth these cracks, you know, we, he's God, he walked on the water, he raised people from the dead. He says, I showed these, these little things, he says, in manifesting my holy humanity. He says, the good, the good people, the very saints followed 2000 years, the, in the following 2000 years, the saints, the, the great saints have lived from the fruits of my holy humanity. And in drops, in, in, in little bits, they have enjoyed my divinity. Now, you have to remember, at every Holy Mass, one of the, one of the greatest things at, at Holy Mass is to hear the priest say, when he puts the drop of water into the chalice, may we share in the divinity of Christ. This prayer is being fulfilled. It's not about just being good and holy and saintly. It's about sharing in divinity. And when you read the, the uh, epistle of Peter, he says, we are called to, be, to, to have this divinization, to, be, to have this divine indwelling. And, and not only that, but if you know anything about Our Lady of America, uh, Our Lady appeared to uh, Sister Mary Ephraim as Our Lady of the Divine Indwelling. I, good things, amazing things are going to happen. And so what God is doing, he's getting the world ready. It seems terrible what's happening, but God is getting everything ready. And he's asking us to trust in him. He said to St. Frostina, the final devotion I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. Divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, you are my hope. You're my savior. You're my king. You're my master. You're my everything. Because what's coming is going to be tough. It's for the last uh, 2000 years, it's like a nine month pregnancy. And Jesus says, it's going to be giving birth. Like it's going to be as, as difficult as a woman giving birth where the pains intensify, uh, the pains become more frequent until the child is born, until the kingdom comes. And God has blessed us to be alive at this time. This is a glorious time to be alive. So he says, he says, but very few in my last 2000 years have enjoyed my divinity. May we share in the divinity of Christ, as the priest says. He says, now, now we are around the third uh, uh, 2,000 years. So now it's the third, third. And he said, there will be a third renewal of the face of the earth. And he's asking us to participate in this. Now, what is, what is the renewal? The first was of water. The second was of blood. The third is of fire. We're going to go through a purging fire, but it's nothing to be afraid of. It's symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary. The, the, the world is going to be consumed in the love of God, Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. We're not going to have really anything to do with the old, the first Adam and the first Eve. Why? They failed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus now gives to us the new Adam and the new Eve who did not fail. So now we're on the third 2000 years and there will be a third renewal. That's what's happening. And this is the reason. Now, this is why Jesus says what's going on right now. For the general confusion, it is nothing other than the preparation of the third renewal. Everything's getting ready for the world to be consumed in fire, the fire of the love of God. 
It's nothing to be afraid of. It will be wailing and grinding for some, or as Our Lady said, for most. But for some, it will be ecstasy. For us, it's going to be ecstasy. Not because we're any better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's because we love Jesus. We love Mary. We have a devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We have a devotion to the, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But now God wants more. He wants us to have more. It's not just to be good and holy and saintly. He says, I want you to share in divinity. So he said, if the second renewal where Jesus manifested his holy humanity, all that he did, all that he suffered was very little of what my divinity operated. Now, now in this new era, in this third renewal, after the earth will be purged, that's the only thing Jesus says. All these doom and gloomers are like, oh my God, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be terrible. The world has to be purged. This is the time for the purging. He has created us. He predestined us to be alive at this time to go through this. Now, what did St. Joan of Arc say? St. Joan of Arc said, I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. Number one, I was born for this time. Here's a 16-year-old girl. And the last thing she says is, God is with me. This intimacy with Jesus is going to increase in each one of our lives. Jesus, you, if you're praying the rosary, wearing the scapular, you're, you're, see, there's three, you have three um, powers, your intellect. We have to begin to understand things from a divine perspective, from Jesus's perspective. That's why he's given us the book of heaven. He gives us lessons each day. As you're reading each day, he's teaching us more and more and more of how to live in the image and likeness of God. Remember when Jesus said to the apostles, you must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. You must be perfected as your heavenly father is perfect. And everybody went, hey, can't do it. I'm human. Jesus says, that's, I want to give you now the opportunity to share in divinity. So he says, in this third renewal, after the earth is purged, it's going to be purged. This is the time we're living in. We are like Joan of Arc. I mean, a 16-year-old girl leading an army into, into battle and defeating another army. Impossible. Where it's like Gideon. It's not the 300,000. It's not the 30,000. God said to, to Gideon, take the, the, those that are drinking like dogs and I will use them. Now, why, why, what does that mean? When a dog laps up the water, his eyes are open. When a human drinks water, he puts his hand down and his head is down. He's not looking around and he's drinking water. Jesus says, I want you to be attentive to what's happening. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand what's going on. This is not a time for doom and gloom. It's not a time for sadness and fear. It's a time of trusting in God, believing in God, hoping in God, having confidence in God, and watching the miracles that are going to happen. Many, many miracles are going to happen. As a matter of fact, Our Lady of America said uh, that the, the miracles that are going to happen in America are greater than all the miracles of Lourdes and Fatima, greater than all of them put together. What's coming to the earth is so magnificent. See, we, 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 it's, it's like I was driving with somebody in the car once and they, they came to a stop sign, screeching halt, you know? And then we, I'd look at it, what are you doing? And then driving to get to another uh, uh, stop sign, screeching halt, you know? And after the third time, I said, what are you doing? Where are you looking? And, and she said, I'm looking right in front of the car that nothing comes in front of me. I said, no, you got to be looking down the road as far as you can see. You, 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 it's not just what's in front of your car that's a bit dangerous. It's what, what's a mile down the road is a date. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to look at what's coming. They are Father. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? When, when the kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, uh, the devil who's been banished from heaven will be banished from earth. But he's not only banished from earth, he's banished from our solar system. He's banished from our Milky Way. He's going to be banished from our universe. You can't, what's coming is so magnificent. And what does scripture say? Then there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. What is coming? It's the new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied. We're not even close to what God wants for us. 
I mean, I love to watch near death experiences because when you watch near death experiences, they they're into the kingdom. My friend died and she told me this. She said, well, she came back to life. But <laughs> She went to, went to uh, paradise. There's her grandmother cooking and there's her mother in the kitchen and there's her father whittling and there's her dead brothers and sisters or dead brothers. And the two little girls that ran up to her said, said to her, can you stay? Can you stay? And he, she knew they were her mother's miscarriages. We haven't seen anything yet. God is going to open the doors to the kingdom. The book of heaven get, gets us to understand there's nothing to be afraid of. When, 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 she, when she came back, she said to me, I was always afraid of death. But heaven is so beautiful. The colors are so beautiful. The music is so beautiful. The smell is so beautiful. The people are so beautiful. So she, when she went up to her father, she said, she says, dad, she goes, I, I must be dead. She says, can I stay? She said, it was so beautiful. And she, the, the father, now get this. The father looked at her and said, you got to ask your mother. So she went to her mom and she said, mom, can I stay? And her mother said, no, you got to go back. You got to go. Her mother was more spiritual than her father and, and touched her right here at the temple and said, you have to go back. And that's where I placed the relic of Louisa because she had a brain aneurysm. Um, they shaved her head. They were going to go in. They said, there's nothing that we can do. We'll try to do something. Three doctors said that. Uh, and uh, we get back home and the doctor says she's fine. So I, we go back up the next day and there she is in bed. She had beautiful red hair. So this red hair is coming out like this. And I, I looked at her and I said, I like your Clarabelle look. And she said to me, you are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, what can I say? I mean, she was alive. That was just so beautiful. But anyways, we haven't seen anything yet. So it, well, let's go back to this. I'm sorry, I get carried away. Um, uh, he says, after the earth is purged, and a great part of the current generation destroyed because the greatest, the, the fastest growing religion is, is Satanism. And, and it's either between God or the devil. It's either Jesus or the devil. It's good and light. It's, it's goats or sheep. It's tares or wheat. We have to make a side. As somebody said to me once, you got to pick a lane. So it's really a, 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 that. <laughs> It's interesting. Uh, it's a new beginning of coming. So she says, I, Jesus, will then be more generous with humanity. I, Jesus, will accomplish the renewal, this, this third renovation that's happening to all the world by manifesting to humanity what my divinity did within my holy humanity, how my divine will acted with my human will, how everything remained linked within me how I, Jesus, did and redid everything on the cross with my mother, and how even every thought of each creature was redone by me and sealed with my divine volition. And then he says this to Louisa, and he says it to us, my love wants to pour itself out. My love wants to make known the excess which my divinity operated in my holy humanity for humanity. These excesses, he says, which greatly surpassed the excesses of my holy humanity operated externally. So he said, what you've seen me do on earth in the gospels, he says, that's what the priests, that's what the priests, that's what the saints uh, got into the, the holy humanity of Jesus. And, and for 2000 years, we've been, we've been listening to the, the at outside how Jesus op out operated outside externally. And he says, now, he says, he says, this is why I sp often speak to you, Louisa, and now to us about living in my divine will, which I, Jesus, have not manifested to any of the saints until now. See, this is a glorious time to be alive. Don't look at the doom and gloom. Look at the glory that's coming. And, and he, the Lord, wants us to live happily, joyfully, peacefully now. He said to Louisa, when people are worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, and negative, they're sinning, he says, they are anticipating hell. But if you're peaceful, joyful, and happy, he says, you are anticipating heaven. I want to be peaceful, joyful, and happy. Why? 
Heaven is here if we want it. He mm -hmm. said the kingdom of God is within you. Remember that. This, this dust, this, this earth is going to embrace the image and likeness of God again. I mean, it's, we don't have it yet. It, it, there's a great miracle that's coming. We're going to witness it. And it's, it's close. It may, might not be tomorrow. I'd like it to be tomorrow. But it's, it's going to happen. So he says, I often speak to you, Louisa, and now us about living in my divine will, which I have not manifested to any saint until now. At the most, the saints have known a shadow of my divine will. But the divine grace, the divine sweetness of, of doing the divine will is in the saints. But to penetrate within uh, the divine will, to embrace the immensity of the divine will, to multiply with God in the divine will, while even being on earth, to penetrate every, both, everywhere, both in heaven and into the hearts of all of humanity, to lay down the human ways. That means, see, 6,000 years ago, Adam and Eve followed the devil. And God said, you have to go where the devil is. You don't want paradise. You don't want to follow me. So you've chosen the devil. You have to go to earth. And what did Jesus say? I saw Lucifer fall like lightning to the earth. Who's the prince of this earth? It's the devil, the evil one. But the 6,000 years is over. The 7,000th year, John Paul II said, get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church and a new springtime of mankind. We are going through the death pains. And what is the death pains? The death pains are not to act in the human way anymore. What's the human way? When you go to confession, when you go to confession, you say, bless me, Father, for I have said, this is what I thought. This is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I failed to do. And I don't want to live like this. I want uh, to make a firm purpose of amendment to avoid the near occasions of sin. Next week, bless me, Father, for I have said, we're, we are fallen nature. We have been redeemed, but we need to be sanctified. And this is what sanctification is. It's going, we're going to learn the way of heaven and no longer the way of earth. So he says to us, if you're peaceful, joyful, and happy, you are anticipating heaven. What, what the book of heaven teaches you is how to be happy. What the book of heaven teaches you every day, Jesus, I mean, I, when I read the book, I, I read the calendar every day. Uh, the calendar is every month. What did Jesus say today in the calendar? What did Jesus say tomorrow in the calendar? And, and what, in August, what did he say? And as you read it, as you study it, as you put it, you're, you're filled with heaven. There's hope. There's confidence in God. There's trust in God. There's belief in God. I don't care what they're doing out there. It's the kingdom of God is within you. And see, that's what God is asking. He's asking us to begin to live this abundant life. And so this is what he says. To penetrate everywhere, both into heaven and to the hearts of humanity. See, we're all brothers brothers and sisters. We all love Jesus. I mean, this, this universal life that Adam had is the Catholic life. What Jesus breathed into Adam was the Catholic life. What did the new Adam and the new Eve do when they came here? They started the Catholic life again, the universal life again. Now Jesus says that my church, I'm going to crown my church with the gift of the divine will. We haven't seen anything yet. I mean, the doom and gloomers, if they could open their eyes and really see what's happening, we would be filled with peace, joy, and happiness. We'd be praising God and loving God and glorifying God. And the evil one is going to be pushed out. He, he stopped the prayers of Adam. He stopped the prayers of Eve. When Jesus and Mary here, they were very upset, but they left that prayer the Our Father, the only prayer they taught is, is sad, but now with the book of heaven, people are beginning to live the life that Adam lost. That's what Louisa possesses, to live the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, who's greater than Adam. The new Adam is greater than Adam. The new Eve is greater than Eve. It, there's no way we're going to lose. So, so this is what Jesus says. He says, uh, to, to basically to embrace the divine immensity, to multiply with God, with Jesus, and even while being on earth, to penetrate everywhere. I can't get in, into it tonight, 
but the promises that Jesus has given to Louisa is astonishing. Uh, it's just, it's, it, it, it's heaven. So both into heaven and into hearts, laying down, laying down, which means getting rid of the human ways of worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin, and acting in the divine ways of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. And he says, this is not yet known. He says, so for much that I tell you, it, 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 it's, it's not going to be a few that this will appear strange. And there are people who are going, where is it? How come I don't see it? Why well, don't know why no Louisa? It's brand new. I mean, it's really not brand new. It's the oldest thing. It's it's what God gave to Adam. But now it's it's the true life of the new Adam. The true He's given us more than what he breathed into Adam. So he says, it's not known and it will appear strange. He says, for those souls do, that do not keep their minds open to the light of the truth. What is the truth? Jesus. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, he says. And they will not understand a thing if they're not open to Jesus. But little by little, Jesus says, and that's our great hope, step by step, little by little, he says, I will make my way. I will manifest now one truth to you when you read, now another truth as you read about living in this divine will so that they will end up understanding. So Jesus says that the book of heaven is has the language of heaven. Okay, for, for most, as you begin to read, you, it's quite hard to understand because as you know, if the first time you read French, first time you read German, it's like, what the heck? First time you read Greek, what the heck? And so what Jesus is showing That's us, what I said when I started reading the volumes. What the heck? <laughs> it's true. It's true. What but is this? As you become accustomed to the to the language of heaven, as you become fluent with the language, and that's why reading and rereading. I mean, if you're in France and you more sure, I mean it's it's it, if you don't <laughs> speak, you know, you can't get anywhere. So it's uh, it, it, Jesus is teaching us how to hear with our ear, with our, not with our ears, but with our heart, this language of heaven. And he says, little by little, I'm going to teach you lessons. Now, one thing, now about another thing, about living in my divine will, so that you will end up understanding. So if we're a stick in the mud, and I've had some people in my prayer book group being a stick in the mud, they've said, I don't understand this, and I'm not going anywhere until I understand it. And I said, just keep on reading. And they go, no, I'm not going to read. And they say, I want to know what this is, right? And let God take care of it. And, and three pages down, you're reading and you go, oh, that's what he was saying three pages ago. You, you, you have to be docile. Our lady was docile. Our lady was fiat. She always said fiat. Fiat me, he, in the incarnation, God became man. So we're going to learn from Jesus and Mary through Louisa how to do this. So he says, now, the first link which connected the true living to my divine will was my holy humanity. And he always talking about his mother, too. My holy humanity identified with my divinity and swam in the eternal volition of God. It kept tracing all the acts of humanity, redoing all the acts of humanity in order to make them Jesus's own, to give back to the Father all the divine glory on the part of all of humanity, to bring the value, the love, the kiss. This is, this is so beautiful of the eternal volition to all of the creatures of God. This is, this. see, Jesus is proposing to us. He came to earth for a bride. This is why people wear the wedding ring. They wear it because they want to accept this, this, uh, this proposal, the first ring. And he calls heaven the wedding feast. And Jesus is, he, he, he loves us so much. He wants us to share in his divinity. He wants to, and, and Jesus tells Louisa, each human being will have their own personal Jesus. I mean, who you are, your, your, your fingerprints, your irises, your, your heights, your sizes, your, your weight, your colors, your, it's all different. Why? He loves our uniqueness. He loves us as who he has created, but he has created us for him. So he says, my holy humanity identified with divinity and it swam in the eternal volition, giving all the traces of all the acts of humanity to make them his own, 
to in order to give back to the Father the divine glory and the power of creatures to bring the value of the love, the kiss of the eternal volition back to humanity. That's how we're supposed, we're supposed to be one with God. God isn't supposed to be a thousand miles away. And in this sphere of the eternal will, Jesus says, I could see all the acts of humanity and those which have been done, those which could be done, those which were not done, and the good acts done badly. And I, God, did everything if they had not been done or and redid all those that were badly done. He says, now this, these acts which are not done, except by me alone and my mother, basically, are all suspended in my divine will, and I await humanity to come to live in my divine will, to repeat what I did. That's the likeness of God, to do what God does. A friend of mine went to Ireland. His father left Ireland when he was 20, had a family, raised a family, and his son was going to be ordained. And he said to dad, let's go to Ireland before I get ordained. And he go that. So they went to Ireland, went to his town. Then the son is walking down the street early in the morning to go to mass. And this man yells out, he goes, are you a Murphy? And he goes, yeah, how do you know I am a Murphy? He says, you walk like your father. Nobody had seen his father for 20 years, but the likeness was there. We're going to be in God's image and likeness. And you have to understand he wants us to be creative with him at the helm, not us. Our human, our human weak, our human humanity is weak. And Jesus is saying, I want to, I want to lead you. I want to guide you. I created you to be one with God, fused with God in his holy divine will. This is this indeed is a glorious time to be alive. And he's he's doing this. So one more thing, and, and then we're done. One more paragraph. He says, This is why I, God, chose you, Louisa, as the second link in connection with my holy humanity. Now, he tells Louisa, Louisa says, how can I be your second link? What about Mary? And he says, me and my mother are one. The new Adam and the new Eve are one. He says, you are the second link, a link which becomes one with mine. And as you live in my holy divine will, as you repeat my own acts, Jesus breathe in my breathing. Jesus breathe is in your breathing. Jesus beat in my heart beating. Your heart, Jesus's heart is beating in your heart beating. He takes us at our word. Jesus walk in my walking. Jesus sing in my singing. Jesus dance in my dancing. God says, yes, I will do that. How much do you want? 30, 60 or a hundredfold. So he says, he says, uh, as you live in my divine will, as you repeat my own acts, I want to do everything that Jesus has done. He says, Other, otherwise on this side, my love would remain without its outpouring, without its glory from humanity for which my divinity operated within my holy humanity. Without the perfect purpose of creation, which is that we are going to be one with God, fused with God, fusing as two pieces of metal welded together. This is what Jesus says. I never want you to leave my side. Or I want you to. And he says, Louisa, my daughter, first, I had to make known what my holy humanity did and suffered, the externally, to be able to dispose humanity to knowing what my divinity did inside. The creature, he says, is incapable of understanding God's work altogether. Therefore, I keep manifesting myself little by little. Then from your link, Louisa, with me, the links of other souls will be connected. And I, Jesus, listen to what he says here. This is the kingdom. We'll have a cohort of souls living in my divine will. And we, all of us, will redo all the acts of humanity. And I, Jesus, will receive the glory of the many suspended acts done only by me and my mother. And from, from uh, uh, he says, and he goes, um, I lost my place. Me and my mother. And from, okay, and from these all other classes, virgins, priests, lay people, according to their office, no longer will operate humanly. This is, this is really important. The, this is now we're entering into sanctification. But the, as they penetrate into my divine will, their acts will multiply for everyone, past, present, and future, in a way that's fully divine. And I, Jesus, will receive from humanity the divine glory of the many sacraments administered to humanity, received in a human way of others which have received in a profane way, 
others who have sullied with interest and many good works was I, Jesus, uh, remain more dishonored than honored. And he says to Louisa, Louisa, I, God, yearn very much for this kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And you, Louisa, you got to pray and yearn for it together with me. And do not move your link of connection within mine, but start as the first one. So who's the first one that possesses this? It's Louisa. Who possesses it fully? Louisa. We're only at the beginning. We're scratching the surface of this. We're not even close. So as you read, as you study, there's going to be a great miracle, Jesus says, where humanity is going to be given this gift. So as I don't know what time it is. What time do we have? How? What do you think? Um, we have a, a few more minutes. Uh, okay. One of the things that I wanted wanted to, you know, you said so much, Father, and it was beautiful. This 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 gift, and and uh, I said, you know, uh, learning about the divine will is like uh, talking about the divine will is like drinking from a fire hose. There's so <laughs> much there. It is so deep and so beautiful, and uh. uh, uh it's just so big, but one of the things, you know, we talked, you talked about the divine mercy and how the, the, the devotion of the divine mercy came, uh, really was the last devotion. And it's just so interesting. It tells so much that it was uh, Jesus. I trust in you because this complete confidence, this complete, uh, 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 surrender to God is, is really the key of, of living in the divine will. And it's, the life, it's the life of Mary. Yes, it is the life of Mary. A fiat. And one of the things that we see, it, because it is a new thing, but I think one of the things that I found to be so interesting is when you go back into scripture and you go back and read, um, you can see, you can see where, where God was planting the seed all along for the divine will. Everything. Everything, everything in sacred scripture, yeah. everything in sacred scripture points to the divine will. It absolutely does. Uh, it's like getting a car, and then you see that car everywhere. When you get the divine will, you start to see the divine will in all sorts of places and things you didn't see it before. It, it really is a new understanding. It's what the saints. This is how I like to explain it. The saints have taught us uh, how to view a black and white photograph. The divine will is three-dimensional technicolor. As you read this, everything changes. Your whole understanding of sacred scripture is intensified. You fall more in love with Jesus. You fall more in love with Our Lady. You fall more in love with the Holy Church. You want our dogma and doctrine to come alive in you. It's, it's the most beautiful thing on earth. And, and think about it. The evil ones thinks he won. The evil one thinks he's conquered. Jesus says, you know, <laughs> My children are going to be living in my divine will. They're going to have a greater life, a higher life than Adam had before the fall. And if he, the devil thinks that he can turn us around, we've learned, we've learned for the last 6,000 years, God wins. And that, that's the beauty of this gift. I, I, I do have a prayer that the archbishop asks us to pray every day. If you want me to pray that. Yes. Why don't we, why don't we end with that prayer? I, I just want to say, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you are are just a wealth of knowledge in the divine hey, will. I'm nothing. No, what I mean, I'm nothing. The, you read the divine will and Jesus speaks to you. That's the most important thing. Let's get right to this prayer, okay? Okay. In the name of the Father. This is the Archbishop asks us to pray every day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O August and most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you and thank you for the gift of holiness of your faithful servant, Louisa Picaretta. She lived, O Father, in your divine will, becoming under the action of the Holy Spirit in conformity with Jesus, obedient even to the death on the cross, victim and host pleasing to you, thus cooperating in the work of redemption of mankind. Our Louisa's virtues of obedience, humility, supreme love for Christ and the church lead us to ask you, Lord, for the gift of her glorification on earth that, so that your glory may shine before all and your kingdom of truth, justice, and love may spread all over the world in the particular charisma, the fiat voluntastua, secret and chela and terra. We appeal to her merits to obtain from you, O Most Holy Trinity, the particular grace which we pray to you with the intention to fulfill your divine will. Amen. And may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, we pray for divine healing 
for all our loved ones and for all our family and friends and make this God, this prayer God's command in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.